Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's great to see you this morning. If you could please come and take your seats, that would be fantastic. Excellent. And a very warm welcome to you as well if you are watching us online. So it is great to be together this morning to worship Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Um, in a few moments, Matt is going to be leading us in a time of praise. Donna is going to be sharing God's word with us a little bit later. And also this morning, we will be taking uh, two minutes at 11 o'clock um, to remember those that died in war and conflict and those suffering as a result of, and we'll be remembering their families and friends. And as we have this time of special focus today, we think about Jesus and we think about how much more he is giving, his sacrifice brought us freedom and hope and lasting peace. Let me read these words from Psalm 145 to you from verse 1. It says, I will exalt you, my God, O King, and with gratitude and submissive wonder, I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and lovingly praise you. Yes, with awe-inspired reverence, I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. And his greatness is so vast and profound as to be unsearchable incomprehensible to man one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty and remarkable acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonderful works I will meditate people will speak of the power of your awesome acts and with gratitude and submissive wonder I will tell of your greatness they will overflow like a fountain when they speak of your great and abundant goodness and will sing joyfully of your righteousness. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you, Leon. If you'd like to stand, we're going to praise God. Be 
to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name I believe, all praise, all praise to to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe. Mountains that I face, this one name is higher. To the empires of our age, this one name is greater. To the giants in my way, this one name is higher. To the evil that prevails, this one name is greater. Jesus, you're the name above all names. Over my fears, over the storms, I'm gonna sing that Jesus is Lord. And Jesus, you're the name above all names. Here in the night, then at the door, gonna sing. Jesus is love to the burden of my shame. This one name is higher to the battles that still rage. This one name is greater oh. to the doubts that steal my faith. This one name is higher to the idols that.
walls shaking, prodigal chase, Lazarus raised, their destiny waking, history changing, powerful name of God, miracle making, city wall shaking, prodigal chasing, Lazarus raised, their destiny waking, history changing, powerful name of God, and Jesus, you're the name above all names, over my fears, over the storm, I'm gonna sing that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus, you're the name above all names, here in the night, the door, I'm gonna sing that Jesus is Lord. Yeah. 
is devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be Praise God. Praise His mighty name this morning. Praise His mighty name this morning. We are going to take time now to remember before God those who have died in war. And I want to share the well-known words of Lawrence Binion. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. And also the words of the Kahima epitaph. When you go home, tell them of us and say for your tomorrow, we gave our today. We're now going to observe two minutes of silence. Thank you.
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. And I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. And I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I build my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in every season. So I
When we were singing earlier on those words of uh, the Jesus name above all names song, I, I was really struck um, by those words, the history changing, powerful name of God. And people often say that you, you can't change history. And that's true on a, on a level. <laughs> but then when we think about God, we think about Jesus, we think about his operation and the way that he moves, and the way that he moves in power, and the way that he transforms situations. He is beyond history. His name is greater and bigger than anything that has gone before, and anything that is, and anything that will be, and anything that ever could be. And I just want us to get a sense of that, because you know, friends, history has got to change talking to Mark earlier on about his grandchildren and thinking about the future and thinking about times to come. History has got to change. If we don't have a sense of that on days like today, when we're thinking about remembrance and we're thinking about those that have laid down their lives, but we're thinking about those who are affected by conflict, deep wounds, deep scars, that span not only through lifetimes, but generations. History has got to change, but it changes through the powerful name of Jesus. And the way that God changes history through his name is through you and I. And the transformation that he brings within us, deep within us through the Holy Spirit, and the transformation that we bring into a society at all echelons, God can use you and your voice in, in ways that changes history for individuals, for families, for generations, for nations. Don't underestimate what God can do in and through you. And so I want to pray this morning, and I, and I, I want to pray for those this morning who have been affected by war and conflict and they might be people that you know and they might be people that, that you don't know um, but I also want to pray that God will release something this morning through what we've been singing and thank you so much for those songs this morning they've been so powerful what we're observing and this just this, just this moment that I believe that God wants to impact lives on so let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come to you this morning. You are the one. You are God who makes wars cease to the end of the earth, who breaks the bow, who shatters the spear, whose name will be exalted in the nations and in the heavens. To, want, to the one that says, be still and know that I am God. 
we come to you today in our brokenness, in our personal brokenness, our weakness, our um, scars and wounds from conflicts in our own lives. Perhaps inner conflicts, perhaps external conflicts, but many things that, that leave their mark. And I know there are many people in this room, and I, and I know myself, of the effect of conflict, big and small, on us. And I just just cry out this morning for healing, for a healing of hearts and minds here and those watching online. A healing for our town and our nation and the nations. And cry out to you for all those victims of conflicts, big and small, local, national, international. That every single person in those conflicts, whatever part they played and whatever victimhood they have in that, they matter to you, Lord. And I know that you see them and know them intimately. So I just cry out to you this morning that heal individuals and heal nations this morning in Jesus' name. And we cry out to you for peace, for peace in our land, for peace in the USA peace between neighbours peace between people on other sides of the fence that there might be a working together to bring about good the good the goodness of God that is so desperately needed in this nation in the in America in every nation of the world we cry out to you Lord we cry out to you for peace and calm and and justice in the Middle East and for a a just conclusion to conflict. Something that preserves lives and preserves communities and gives people a hope and a future. And we pray the same for Ukraine. Lord, we don't rely upon the words of man and the promises of man. I will get this thing sorted out overnight. Jesus is the answer, not politicians not armies, not bombs. You are the answer, Lord God. And so we cry out to you, Lord, to bring resolution, to bring your resolution. And for the men and the women that are engaged and involved in that, Lord God, we pray that you would touch them and change their hearts and their lives and put a godly agenda upon their heart for the good of all men and women, boys and girls cry out to you for it and I just I ask Holy Spirit that as we've been reflecting this morning that we would be history changers I don't want to use the word history makers but history changers transformers of history of history through generations that are represented in this room in this moment now Lord we cry out to you to bring about that transformation to 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 just foster within us a heart of wonder at you once again, Lord, of the enormity and the greatness of you that we've been singing about today. And that out of that revelation, out of that relationship, out of that connection, Lord, that you would transform us and make us transformers and changers of history in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just release that in Jesus' name this morning and that we would receive that with faith we would receive that with faith and an open heart this morning. So let's just sing those words again. Come on my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Thank you, man.
So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else before you, except for hearts. Just believe that there's somebody here this morning and just saying, well, it's all very well you're thinking, it's all very well you say that, Leon, but I can't change my circumstances. I can't change the future. Who do you, who do you, who do you think you are? <laughs> who do you think I am? I, I, I tell you, you know, the, the, the choices that you make in the moments transform history. They really do. The decision to follow Jesus just changes the world. Think of all of the people that you impact in your life. And you do have so many more choices than you think. And it may well be that some of those choices need releasing and need helping. And I'll just really encourage you to take the opportunity this morning, today at least, to pray that prayer and just say, Lord, transform the circumstances through me. Transform through me change history through me for my family for my community for my workplace for my life do that Lord in me I believe that God will hear that prayer and will respond to that prayer and change history through you you have more choices than you think more choices than you think and if you need help releasing that then I'd I'd love to pray for you and let's do that later on come and find me or speak to somebody doesn't matter who it is I've got magic hands or magic words or anything like that anybody's prayers in this room are as good as mine and pray for you and see that freedom in your life bless you amen amen thank you so much thank you man thank you excellent please take your seats yeah thank you So uh, just a few notices before the children go out. Uh, Just a reminder that we have our worship night here tonight. Excellent. (laughs) Yes, um, so a great opportunity to come and connect with God and meet with God. And we trust that's going to be in a powerful way. I'm really praying for that tonight. That we will encounter God in a powerful way. That his fire will fall in this place tonight. And we will see lives transformed tonight. So come along, 6.30 this evening. I'm here for our worship night. Um, <clears throat> just continuing the Remembrance Day reflections in town tomorrow at Fremlin Walk. Um, I'm going to be helping lead a service of remembrance, just a short service of rem- remembrance at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. So if you're in town, um, please come along. We'll come and say hello. Uh, it would be good to see you if you're in town tomorrow. A reminder as well that we have our baptism service on the 24th of November. Yes, yes, very exciting. Got three people getting baptised. Super excited about that. I do sense there might be one or two more. And perhaps that is your next step of changing history, to get baptised and follow Jesus in what he commanded us to do. So please speak to me. Speak to one of the leaders. Um, Don't be shy. (laughs) Um, but yeah, baptism service, super exciting. Be in prayer for that. Invite your friends and family. It's going to be amazing. I don't know how we're going to fit everyone in, but we will fit everyone in. And uh, excited about that on the 24th. And just finally, a quick reminder that well, the Wellspring group is on this Wednesday evening. And we also have the hub this week on Friday as well. So uh, please avail yourselves of those and certainly be in prayer for those as well. Right, celebration time. Who's got something to celebrate this morning? Excellent, excellent. Let's move this back a bit. Nice one, Max. 
So, Max, what are you celebrating today? Um, I got third place for TCRS. Oh, so what's TCRS? It's a, like, so it, ha it makes you learn your times tables. Oh, wow. That's and really I got good. Oh, congratulations. Well done, mate. That's really good. Yeah, brilliant. Esther, what are you celebrating? Um, I am here on behalf of Amelia, who couldn't be here today because her parents are selfish enough to have a night out by themselves, so she's with Grandma. Um, so, is this on? <clears throat> so, Amelia, as you know, damaged her wrist, her soft tissue, so therefore wasn't able to play football for six weeks. For those of you who know Amelia, you can imagine the struggle at home. Um, anyway, this week was her first week back at football, and on her Monday training, she got player development, and on Saturday, she got player of the match from the parents' certificate trophy. Imagine they're here. So she did really well. Can I take something? Yes, please do. Yes. Does she like those? Does she like those? <laughs> we'll find out. Hello there. How are you? What's your name? Nana. Oh, nice to see you. What are you celebrating today? My birthday. It's your birthday, oh wow. And how old are you? Seven. Seven, oh, happy birthday to you. Do you want to take something to celebrate that? Brilliant, happy birthday. Yeah. Nancy, what are you celebrating today? Today, um, at swimming, um, I swam for the first time without floats. Oh wow, congratulations. That's brilliant, Nancy, well done. Peter? Absolutely wonderful, brilliant. And also, if I can, and just also, she's not here this morning, but I'm sure she will be watching after the event. Margaret Johnson celebrated her 80th birthday this week. So I don't know if you can see me on the camera, Margaret, but happy birthday from all of us. And, uh, yes. Excellent. Okay, now I can see that Judd has got the offering bags, which is something that I had forgotten. So we are just, before the children go out, we're going to take up our offering for the work of the Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you so much to everybody for all of your generous giving. And when we pass these bags around, it's just one small opportunity to give. But we're grateful for all of your giving at Connect Church. Praise God. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Right. So, children, you are going to be going out in just a moment, but I shall just pray for you before you go. Yeah. Praise God this morning that you speak to us, that you love us, Lord, that you have a word for us. I, I believe you've already spoken powerfully to, to people this morning. And I believe you're going to continue to do that. And I just really pray for the children, for the young people as they go out, that you will really minister to them this morning, that you will speak to them, that you will encourage them in their faith and that they will go from this place transformed. And I just thank you for everybody who teaches our young people, who cares for them, who looks after them, who encourages them. I thank you so much for them. I really pray that you would bless them this morning as they are caring and for, for others who are staying in the service today, that you would bless them as well. We thank you so much for all those that minister to our children and young people. So bless them all in Jesus' amazing name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much, children. You have been amazing, as always. Very patient this morning. Bless you as you go. Excellent. So Donna is going to be sharing God's word with us this morning. So it's time to come up. I'm just going to pray for you, Donna. Yeah. Praise you, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, as I just said, I just thank you so much that you have a word for each one of us. I really do believe you are speaking to your people this morning, and I thank you for that. And I thank you for what you have laid upon Donna's heart to share with us this morning. Lord, would you bless her first and foremost, Lord, as she ministers your words, Lord. Give her your words, Lord, and just encourage her in her spirit as she brings that. May she feel the freedom to just share what you've put on her heart today. And Lord, may you give us those receptive hearts to really receive from you today. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Right, hold on, let me sort out my, let me sort my stuff out first. Right, so if we could have the first slide. It's a very visual start, so I'm hoping you can see the first <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to paint some pictures with words. Just chat amongst yourself for a minute. Ooh. Ooh. Can we? No. No. Is it coming or shall I move over the... We're restarting. It's not really important, to be honest. It's a bit fluffy start. We could do without it. We could just get into the Bible. <laughs> we'll give it a minute. Well, like 10 seconds. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. James isn't looking at me. Shall I just skip on head? Shall I skip over the dog pictures? Okay, we were going to have some pictures of dogs. We'll do a bit with that. Anyway, <laughs> talk to me later. I'll send them out. They were very amusing. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not a dog. Marion was looking excited. There was a dog on the screen. Sorry? Just go. Okay, we're not going to have the dog bit. Okay, let me just work through my notes. So, okay, so I was doing a bit of a fluffy start with pictures of dogs because I chose a passage to preach on and then, oh, oh, look, scrap all that. Well, I chose a fluffy start with dogs because I'm a bit anxious about what I'm preaching on. <laughs> so I thought I'd just um, share some pictures of dogs first too. So this was a picture that I posted shortly after we got Nori, who is our dog. You can't really see, she's, she's more than a black blob <laughs> in that picture. But I posted this on Facebook and someone commented that um, they thought that they looked like each other. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was a compliment. Um, so that got me um, looking on the internet for people who look like their dogs. So we've just got a few, um, if we can share them. There you go. <laughs> and the next one. It's a good look. <laughs> And the last one. <laughs> Not so sure about that one. But anyway, as I said, that's just a ridiculous start because I'm going to be speaking on Matthew 15 and it's an uncomfortable um, passage as it's about Jesus and the Canaanite woman. And um, Jesus says some stuff that, as I talk about later, doesn't seem very Jesus-y. Um, but before we get into... I'm going to use the word jesus -y a lot. Um, <laughs> um, before we look at that, I just want to have a quick um, talk about the preceding verses, which is when the Pharisees are questioning Jesus about why his disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. And they come to him with this question, and Jesus gives them a good talking to about the fact that the Pharisees place a lot of importance on things that aren't that important, whilst ignoring the heart of God. And then he quotes these verses from Isaiah. He says, These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Well, this is not what the Pharisees wanted to hear. And the disciples go to Jesus and they say, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? So here we have the Pharisees with Jesus the Son of God in their midst. And they, A, were worried about hand washing, and B, missed an opportunity to learn about what actually matters to God, to hear his heart about things, because they took offence. Offence stopped them having the encounter with God that was available to them. And these verses lead into our passage for this morning, which is Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. And we're going to read through it verse by verse and think about what's going on as we look through it. And then we'll have a look at what it might teach us for today. So I'm just going to get there on the slides. I'll just go through verse by verse. You can 
probably work it out with every confidence in Joey. So, <laughs> verse 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. So Jesus had been with the Pharisees in a place that was predominantly Jewish and went to a different place, Tyre and Sidon, which was a mostly Gentile region. When this story is recounted in Mark 7, it's basically the story, just slightly different details, it says that Jesus wanted to keep his presence there kind of on the down low. But as we'll see from this, that didn't really work out for him. So verse 22 says, A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. So this is a Canaanite woman, someone who would have been despised by the Jews because the Canaanites were Israel's ancient enemy. And also she was a woman, so that wasn't really working in her favor either. She comes to Jesus to ask for mercy, or we might say healing or deliverance, for her daughter who is demon-possessed. This is a woman who is presumably at her wit's end. She has been caring for a daughter who is suffering. But she's also someone who seems to have grasped something as an outsider that many of those who had been around Jesus struggled to recognize. Jesus is the Messiah. He has power to heal and deliver. With this in mind, we might expect Jesus to respond with joy and compassion to this woman, but we read that he doesn't even answer her. So verse 23, Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. It seems that she just didn't cry out once, but that she was either near them crying out persistently or maybe following them around. And the disciples seem to be moved more by irritation than compassion. And they asked Jesus to send her away. Now, this probably did mean give her what she's asking for so she'll be quiet and get out of our hair. It's not a great response, is it? A bit like when a small child wants a biscuit or to watch some TV and you just let them do it, not really to bless them, but just to stop the whinging. <laughs> so verse 24 says, he answered, this is Jesus, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Notice this is still not directed at the woman, but rather a response to his disciples. I wasn't sent for her, I was sent for God's chosen people. Now, we know that Jesus had already healed the centurion's servant at this point. So there's something more going on here than meets the eye. But nevertheless, I wonder if this, I wonder if I was this woman, that this would have been the moment I would have walked away. There was definitely a real opportunity for her to feel disappointed, rejected, offended. But instead of that, we read... The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. She comes and kneels before Jesus, showing humility and worship, despite his seeming disinterest in her. Before he has done anything for her, and with no guarantee that he will answer her request, she kneels before him in a position of submission and worship. And she brings her request again. Now, this is the moment that we expect Jesus to respond positively with compassion and mercy. We've seen it before. So what does he do? So he replies, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Jesus is talking about the fact that his earthly ministry was primarily to the Jew Jewish people but I try to put myself in this woman's shoes. I've put myself on the line in public, made a bit of a spectacle of myself. I've nailed my colours to the mast that I believe this man to be the Messiah. And I've publicly asked for his help, kneeling on the ground. And now he's likened me to a dog. Is that what just happened? <laughs> 
Now, I know we're reading this in black and white, and we don't have the benefit of tone or facial expression, which does make a big difference. Anyone who's had a text message misunderstood knows about that. But still, it's hard to find a redeeming feature in being called a dog. Now, we saw those pictures of people that clearly were quite happy to go in a magazine and <laughs> be told that they looked like their dogs. And some commentaries did say that the word in Greek meant a little dog or a pet dog. <laughs> but dog was still a term used to insult Canaanites because they were seen as unclean. And to be honest, I've read this a lot, I've read around it a lot, and I'm still not entirely sure why Jesus used this tactic. I'm guessing that it was probably to teach his disciples something, but it seems, again, very un jesus -y to me. Except for the fact that it draws something out of this woman, which is remarkable. And that's kind of trademark Jesus. Instead of taking offence at, at his words and stomping off, which I think I might have done, or maybe just giving up, you know, she did her best, it didn't work, what can you do? No, she responds in verse 27, yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. It's a bit of a mic drop moment, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is, I'm here, <laughs> stood before you. Jewish people saw dogs as unclean animals that were outside of the house, living on the street. Stray dogs is what they would have been thinking of. But Canaanites kept dogs as pets. I was going to say a bit like some of us, but maybe not quite like some of us. I'm sure some of our dogs probably eat better than some people. But nevertheless, they would have been inside the house. So when the household ate their meal, the scraps or crumbs would have fallen to the floor, and the dogs could eat them too. This didn't steal food from the children of the house. They had the food they needed, and the dogs did. This woman receiving from Jesus was not taking anything away from the Jewish people who Jesus had initially been sent to. They could both receive what they needed. And then in verse 28... Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is more like it, isn't it? This is what we've been waiting for. Woman, you have great faith, and the healing happens. If we go back and think about what the disciples had said, if Jesus had responded when the disciples requested that he perform the healing just to get her to go away, it would have actually reinforced the idea of just getting the scraps. Have this so we don't have to deal with you. But somehow, in the most unexpected way, Jesus draws this woman into an exchange where not only does she get her request granted, but she is one of the few people to hear Jesus say, you have great faith. What could be better than that? But to get there, she had to resist the urge to take offence, unlike the Pharisees had earlier, and she had to remain humble. So what about us? What can we learn from this rather bizarre account? The first thing is around offence. Do we get offended with God? Has Jesus not done what you wanted him to, and so you've created some distance between you and him? This woman came to Jesus with a request, and initially Jesus was silent. And some of us have prayed, and we haven't heard an answer at all. It's like complete radio silence. And it would be easy to get offended at this, to assume the answer is no, or that God doesn't care, or maybe even that God isn't there. And so you stop asking, and you create this distance between you and God. But the problem is, it's much easier to hear when you're close. Or maybe you're asking God about something and you don't like the answer you're getting. <laughs> I hope that's not just me. <laughs> the Pharisees asked Jesus a question. They did not like the answer because it was challenging to them. And so they walked away and created distance between themselves and Jesus. Or maybe you keep praying about one thing 
and God's talking to you about something else. I heard a great story on a podcast, you'll be shocked to hear. Amy said to me this week, some, pe- some um, women are called crazy cat ladies, you're the crazy podcast lady. <laughs> Hannah, I see that hand. <laughs> anyway, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, but this podcast had an interview with a lady called Tanya Harris, and she has a ministry where she teaches on hearing from God, and she goes around speaking about this in churches and at events. And she spoke at a church, and then at the end of her talk, she invited people to come forward for prayer. And a lady came forward and said, please could you pray for me that I will be able to hear from God? So Tanya said, yeah, sure, but before we start, can I just ask you if there's anything you feel God might be saying to you already? And this lady said, well, yeah, actually, a couple of months ago, I did have a dream, and in that dream, I heard a voice, and it said, eat more vegetables. (laughs) So Tanya was like, okay, how's your health? And this lady went on to say, oh, it's really bad, and I've got this problem, and I've got that problem, and another problem. And blah. So she listened to her, and then she said, do you think the voice in the dream w- was from God? And the lady said, yeah, I, I do, actually. So the question is, are you eating more vegetables? And this lady was like, oh, do you know, I really don't like vegetables. It's really hard, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's really difficult to eat healthy, and... I haven't really, I haven't really managed to do it. So Tanya's response to her was, I'm not praying for you to hear the voice of God. You already have. Now go and eat more vegetables. (laughs) (laughs) And it's a bit of a silly example, but I know at times I'm praying about one thing and God keeps talking to me about something else. It's so annoying (laughs) because I want him to stick to my agenda. This is what I want to hear about. This is where I want you to move. This is what I want you to do. And he's like, Donna, will you just get up early and have a devotional? No. (laughs) Donna, will you just fast and pray? I really would just like you to do it, God. (laughs) Um, And it's really hard, isn't it? But if I just want God to stick to my agenda, it begs the question, who is God in my life? Who calls the shots, me or God? And if I'm asking God about one thing and he keeps answering with something else, can I respond with humility and trust that he is God and he actually knows what I need more than I do? The Canaanite woman in the story did hear what Jesus was saying, but it wasn't what she was expecting or hoping for. But she still responded to it in faith. She knew who Jesus was. She knew he really was the one that held the answer for her life and for that of her daughter. And she wasn't going to let a little bit of offense get in the way of receiving from him, but rather approach Jesus in humility and faith. So my first point is don't get offended, oh God. (laughs) Or if you have, I would really just urge you to spend some time praying about it. Because actually, we can't necessarily change immediately. We can't be like, I've had this real problem with God, but now I'm just going to get over it. We have to sit, we have to be really honest with God and pray and ask him to help us and just draw near again. And my second point is that we need to learn what the Bible calls to be poor in spirit. This deserves a um, a talk all of its own, really. But Matthew 5, verse 3 said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. One of the commentaries um, said that this Canaanite woman is a picture of what it looks like to be poor in spirit. In the Amplified Bible, Matthew 5, 3 says this, Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are the poor in spirit those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. And I've got a quote. Bear with me. Have a drink while I bend down. 
I'm just going to read a little bit from a book that I've been reading. And this book um, has been written by uh, one of the lecturers that we have at college. And this story happened to him. And he lives in Canada in a community there. Him and his family live in community with um, all sorts of people, but a lot of people who are coming off drugs or coming off um, working on the streets. And so he's right at the nitty-gritty of God moving in people's lives. So he writes this story about a lady called Grace. I'm here. This is all I can do. I made it. Please help me. These were the words of my friend Grace standing in our hallway, drenched with rain, exhausted, and at the end of every resource. We had arranged for her to arrive three hours earlier to stay with us, as she tried to sort her life out and get into detox. When she didn't show, we suspected we would not be seeing her at all. This was not the first time we had been stood up and it would not be the last. As it got later into the evening, we lost more and more hope and got ready for bed. But then the buzzer rang. She had been wandering the rain-washed streets and alleys, trying to decide whether to give in to her cravings or to give in to hope. Finally, she bumped into a street evangelist who handed her a soggy pamphlet bearing the title, Jesus or Drugs, Your Choice. I do not generally like these judgmental style pamphlets or the approach of the missionaries who distribute them, but I thank God for this one. She read the bold print and made the choice. It took everything she had, quite literally, she had to walk away, away from what she knew, let her old self die, and give herself up to whatever God might have in store for her. The image of her weeping in our hallway will always be my default for what it means to be poor in spirit, and therefore what it means to be blessed. Most of us, I presume, are not choosing between Jesus and heroin or Jesus and amphetamines or whatever, but we are all faced with choices. Jesus or whatever would take us away from him. And sometimes that's bad things, like heroin. I think we would all agree that heroin is a bad thing that would take us away from Jesus. But sometimes it can be things that are good, but actually if our focus is on them, rather than God. They become an idol and they become a bad thing. Will we always choose Jesus first? Even if it means saying, not my will, but yours, Lord. Even if we don't understand why we're going through the things that happen or why God hasn't answered that prayer as quickly as you'd have liked or in the way you'd have chosen, will we continue to engage with him and kneel before him? and choose to trust him. Because those are the kind of people that inherit the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. And those are the people who please Jesus with their faith in him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, and Lord, even the bits that we find hard and we don't understand, Lord, we thank you for that, because Lord, there's a lot in life that we don't understand too. But Lord, we know that if we come to you and submit to you and worship you, Lord, that you bring all things together for our good. Lord, that you are always good, and everything that you do is good. And Lord, I just pray for myself, but also for anyone here, Lord, who is really struggling with disappointment. Lord, people that have taken offense at something you have or have not done. And Lord, I just pray that you would help them to just be honest with you about it. Lord, to draw close to you. To just know that you are there with arms open wide, ready to receive them and to minister to them. And Lord, as we think about this Lady Grace, Lord, that 
in our eyes, Lord, her life was a mess, and yet somehow, in all of that, Lord, you drew her to you. And Lord, that just even in that moment, before anything else was sorted out, Lord, that she was blessed because she'd turned her back on everything else she knew and chose you. And Lord, I pray that we would be people who do the same, Lord, that we would not get distracted by the things of this world, even the good things, Lord, but that we would wholeheartedly choose to follow you. And Lord, that in that way we would be blessed people. Yeah, Lord, I just thank you. I just pray that you would really comfort anyone who's just struggling with this this morning. Lord, that they would know your presence really close to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, really good. Thank you so much, Donna, for, for that word. And I think that God is really... Yeah, really speaking to us this morning and I think really particularly just maybe pushing a button or two <laughs> with one or two um, this morning. Um, and I would just really encourage you, as I, as I did earlier on in, in response to, to Donna's message, where there is that hurt, where there is that disappointment, where there is that offence, you know, uh, uh, something that that you perceive that God has or hasn't done that just doesn't sit right with you just yeah really press into that and please ask somebody to pray for you or with you I think uh, God will really minister to you in that gentle way so we just really encourage that today so thank you a big thank you to everybody who has served us in various ways lots of unseen ways so um, thank you all um, for all of that and uh, we look forward to seeing you tonight. I would really, yeah, just really urge you, encourage you to come along tonight. You know, you might not normally come along to one of these sorts of things. Come along. Come along. Come and meet with Jesus again tonight. So God bless you all. Have an amazing rest of the day. Please stick around for a tea or a coffee.